So we're back on the bench with Rick to wire up this RF Solutions RIOT or Riot's device. And I know the first thing you're thinking, is that a recycled Rolex wrist strap on Rick's wrist? That's almost a, a tongue twister there, Gary. It is, I think it's attached to his Apple Watch as well. You notice the aerial in there? We'll come back to that in a minute. We've got our lights, but they're not the right voltage, are they? Well, no, I thought it was getting mains voltage, so we're gonna have to convert this pre-assembled kit that had everything wrong with it. It's loop in and loop out. Yeah, so we've got to convert it to four separate lights, so we're just just getting rid of the manufacturer's joints, but we're going to recycle the cable and join them back onto the fixtures um, so we can have each one individually controlled by the uh, RF Solutions Riot. Now we're going to bring in the Barney joint. Now we've looked at this before on the channel. We absolutely love it. There's some top tips with it. You notice that he's already put on the two strain relief connections on the actual flexes and we've all missed that before. And we've we've all done that. Yeah, you've wired up something then realized the bit that was supposed to go on the cable at the start isn't on. And why is it so important we have the correct IP rated in this case, gel connector, the Barney, on this circuit? Well, a lot of people, it comes to outdoor light and you'll come back to it in a few years and you'll see this condensation inside, either your enclosure or side your fixture. A lot of that moisture actually travels up the cable. So as the system heats up and cools down, moisture gets drawn in through the tiny little gap in between the two conductors within the cable. And is that called the capillary action, is it, where it's just dragging that moisture up? It is, that is capillary action. Oh, they've been listening, yeah. Gordon. You now notice that we haven't used a Wago connector. Why is that? Because it doesn't come with one. So we're using the screw connector that came with the Barney, uh, and we're just going to drop that into the gel. We, I guess we could try to do a, a 221 in there, but it looks a little bit tight for that. Uh, but this gel is actually doing the IP protection. So the, uh, the bits Rick's about to put on the, uh, the, the, the gland ends, um, they're just for strain relief. There's something quite satisfying about doing it as well, because you get some of that, what you like to call ectoplasm, squeezing out the side, little yeah. sticky on your hands well, as well. Any, any Ghostbusters fans will know exactly what ectoplasm is. But uh, yeah, so they're, we think they're great little joints, ideal for this kind of application. So ferrules on the ends, just gonna prepare them all, ready to connect into the uh, RIOT box. Drill out the entries, uh, five 20 millimeter entries <gasps> in there. What's that? I don't know what that is, uh, some sort of cleaning device, I don't know. Anyway, put the glands in. Again, glands, these come with the unit and they are rated to IP68. A lot of people forget when they're choosing glands about that because that's, again, sets the, the weakest link in the system. Uh, the gland needs the matching closing. Now, this isn't mains voltage, is it? Because we made that mistake earlier. So we're bringing in our power supply. So what's going to happen with the connections inside of well, here? The great thing is the get out of jail is this device is both low voltage powered or mains voltage powered. So I've missed out the primary side and connected in the low voltage on the secondary side of the power supply. And then we've just looped that across the volt-free contacts using some double ferrules to loop in and out of the common contacts. So what I'm right in thinking, these are positive and negative now, not line and neutral. Is there any polarity to it? Uh, well, we, we did check that actually. When we found we could plug the plug in either way. Um, so we've, we've, we've kind of guessed on this, but it didn't actually, uh, it didn't actually matter. Um, but it does for our wiring, because this is a DC powered uh, control electronics here. So we're going to now make all our negatives into one connection coming back to our supply. So we've linked our positive in. Oh, nice bit of tie wrapping for yeah. us, trying to keep it neat. Tie wrapping, yeah. So just common up the uh, the uh, the negative connections. Yeah, so again, I think there's a, there's a rectifier in the front end of each one of those fixtures. So it's not really polarity sensitive at the fixture end, okay. but this RIOT device is. So, so that's just all connected then. So we should be able to power this up now. And is there that graphic equalizer we're going to see jumping around? So this is what it looks like when it's covered on. Yeah. But you do like that graphic equalizer don't well you? what i love about all our rt solutions uh, from rf solutions is there's loads of diagnostic leds in there so you can tell whether channels are switched on whether you're receiving signal whether it's cooked up to the network 